Oh, hello team, I hope you're all doing well, as well as I am. Stupid. Right, okay. Um, yes, I was supposed to be in my um, zinc plating memorabilia. Regalia. That's the one. Is it Sunday morning, Win? Oi. Say hello then. Well, at least he's not barking. Uh, right. I will be doing it later. Not sure if it's in this episode or not. Hmm, where are we at now? 21? Don't know. I forget. Doesn't mean anything. Uh, yeah, I hope uh, Christian Eriksen uh, makes a full recovery. That didn't look good at all, did it? It's quite scary, in actual fact. Okay, this little paraffin container that I had going here. The beauty is, when I sort of left it for a few days, unintentionally, it separated. So you had nice, clean paraffin. And all the slot at the bottom. Of course, when you sort of stirred it up and started cleaning things in it, it went all oh, flipping silver and nasty. So I've, I've literally got that much waste and that's it. And the rest of it is back in there. So I can reuse it. That's, that's, okay, it looks a bit dark, but you'll see it when it when it comes out. So that's, that's really good. Best news of all, I went to see Mr. Paul yesterday. Thank you, Mr. Paul. Uh, Paul is the chap uh, who came... To visit and say hi uh, with his wife Lynn. Hi then, and they took away the engine casing of us. So let's have a look. Uh, Paul said, "Let me have it and try and fix this weldy nonsense that was underneath." Remember, it was all holy and bullety, bullety, and bits of solder in it and that stuff that didn't work. And oh, it was just a nightmare. Look, what's the Paul? has achieved he has achieved fineness and if you remember there was a big hole under here wasn't there no more so well done Paul thank you that means I can now apply this stuff and, and, and actually get the engine back together so I'm more excited about that than I am about uh, zinc plating at the moment. So, although my other parts are ready to go, basically, I still uh, want to get this engine back together so I can just put it indoors somewhere, wrap it away so it's just ready to pop back in the frame uh, when I've got round to having a look at it. It's not overly brilliant, is it? But... Uh, I think it's pitted quite harshly down around where your feet go, that kind of area, um, to, to the point where I actually have some two-pack. Yo, two-pack secure. And I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to uh, feather that in and let it go off and then sand it back and see what kind of a finish I get on that. And I'm going to etch prime the whole flipping lot once I've taken the paint off the rest of it. And uh, literally ready for reassembly then, aren't we, after the zinc plating so right I'm going to get me uh, non overalls on and uh, my non protective uh, PPE and I will crack on with this cleaning this out with some old rags and things and that's in fact I could be sucking it up now can't it get in there super flipping duper right I say thanks again Paul uh, great to see you again Lynn fantastic uh, Carolyn says hi, and uh, Sergeant so Winston. Ding win. Say hi to Paul. Say, yes, Paul. Right, okay. Okay, catch in a bit. Whoa, dude. Jeez, well, following on from this morning's uh, video, well, I started working on that engine panel, didn't I, that uh, Paul very expertly fixed. Well, I've been at it basically all day, finger blasting it all over the flipping shed. And I have literally been in here for about three hours. A, because of the heat, it's been 29 degrees in the garden, in the shade. And so in here, it's got insulation on the ceiling, uh, and it kept it a few degrees down, but but the humidity just got me. So I ended up going out and putting my feet up, watching some football. These prices we have to pay, eh? Anyway. 
Right, let's have a little sip of Ribena, as it's my birthday still. <laughs> mm. Oh, it's bloody awful, that. Mm -mm. Right, what I've done with this, I've gone over literally with a razor blade, every square millimetre of everything. Remove that old spray that I put on uh, initially. That looks a lot better than when I had a go at it, didn't it? That looks fantastic, that. You never know. You never know, Paul. It looks fantastic, doesn't it, if you squint and look the other way? <laughs> Only joking, but that is fantastic. So, yeah, I've just laid down a coat of uh, the old acid there. The old acid etched. Yeah, you know, I'm a fan of that now. Yeah, proper fan of that. That's good stuff. Yeah, I've heard people mention it before, but being not being a painter or anything, or not being anything really, just being a man in shed, I, I never used it because I thought it was always another expense. <clears throat> what did I know? But there we are. We all learn from our mistakes, don't we? So, oh, I've got to paint that yet as well, haven't I? It's me little horny horn. Do you know what? See, I've taped off the terminals there. I might just paint that. Silver, same as that. Well, it'll just look a bit dicky in black, wouldn't it? Because everything else on the bike is silver and blue and white. So... Oh, I could give it a lick of white, actually. Uh, comment down below, guys, where this goes, the horn. Does, is it on view? Because I don't know where it goes. It just came in a box of bits. Turn it around. Yeah, let us know in the comments down below where that goes. Because until I start putting the bike back together, I haven't got a clue. So if it's on view, uh, I could even paint it white, couldn't I? Because I have... Or have I finished it? I think I've finished it. That white paint that I did that with, those two... Um, racks, front rear racks, and I finished it off with this stuff, which is flipping brilliant. Easy Home Metal Protective Varnish Spray White, and um, because that Simon Eyes acrylic white uh, gloss wasn't gloss, it was like a matte satin. This stuff it just it covers it beautifully, and it is also from the acrylic family, so it's the same sort of, it's not going to bubble up. I've learned, you know, I've learned so much on this on this project, um, paint-wise. Before I used to go down Poundland and get a couple of tins of silver and all that sort of guff. Uh, yeah, and basically everything I did was, was matte, uh, matte, matte black. Uh, obviously apart from the colour of whichever bike it was I was doing. Uh, satin black, sorry, not did I say matte, yeah, satin black. So, yeah, I've, I've learnt a lot, and I've learnt it doesn't matter what size your bike is, it's still going to take you the same amount of time start to finish. It's still going to cost the same to get it done. Doesn't matter that the part's smaller, you know, carburetor's still going to be, you know, 100 quid, the same as a big carburetor sort of thing, but not that I had to buy a car because that one was fine. Um, yeah, I went through through the bills last night for it, and I shocked myself. Okay, well, like you say, the guesses have stopped now, and I've still got things to buy. And I think I've been through this before, haven't I? Out of that list, I think there's five, four or five of you guys. In with a shout of winning the, uh, the watch of ages. The Watch of Ages, and it's made by Quim, as we know. No idea what that means. Sounds like it takes a bit of a licking, but there we are, I don't know. Right, I'm going to give that another ten minutes. Uh, the last game uh, tonight is going to kick off in a second, so... Or shall I just leave that? That acid, I'm in no race somewhere. I'm going to leave the acid etch on tonight, and just leave it, that's it. And then tomorrow... Evening after work, I will give it some wheel silver. I'm not going down the VHT route um, because you saw, same as me, I put a VHT on lacquer, um, acid etch, VHT uh, silver, whacked it in the oven, gas marked for 35, and it came out just the same as it was before. And one part was even more. So I'm just going to do acid etch, wheel silver, clear acrylic lacquer. End of. So, 
you know, if all the paint des decides to jump off after a couple of weeks, and so what? I don't care. Anyway, take it easy. Uh, I need to go and um, check on the Ribena status and have an early night with my feet up watching the footy. Right, catch you in a bit. Hi ho, fiddly dee, what's this nonsense? Hello guys, back again. Take a look. Ooh, suit you, sir. So that's come, come out really nicely. That is the acid etch uh, primer, if you like, on there. Yeah, I've just been over it with a, a very light 2000 grit paper just to get the edges off of that. Any little nipples sticking up that finger blasted them right away. Uh, I'm going to put some wheel silver on them shortly as I am me little horn. So that'll be silver in the end. I was going to do it white, wasn't I? Should I do it white? Don't know. Like I say, comments below where that's supposed to be, what colour it's supposed to be. Right, b before I wrapped up last night, I thought to myself, have a rummage through the box of bits and pieces, which is down here, of which there are many. Uh, you know, it's all that kind of gubbins in there that I've done bits and pieces. And I thought to myself, where's that little bracket that goes onto the engine that the carburetor sits on and the reeds? And as I was rummaging through the old drawers there of plenty, I came across the carburetor. So I thought to myself, right, anything in those drawers have been done and they're ready to go back on the bike. But when I saw it, it had, it had gone back to its original hue, i.e. it was um, horrible. It was it sort of went brown in, in places and bits and pieces. So it's all gone in this little beauty, which is, as you know, the paraffin bath. The only parts I didn't put in is the slider and uh, needle and the top piece, which came out rather nicely anyway. So I thought, I don't want to put that in a rubber seal in that, but not that the paraffin won't will harm that. That's the beauty of it. So let's have a look inside. It's been soaking since yesterday evening. And let's have a look. I'll bring you in a bit closer. I just... Hmm. What should we do? What should we do? Let me give it a brush first, a bit of a clean with me detailing brush. That's better. You better, you better, you bet. Ooh. Oh yeah, that's doing it. Doing it, doing it. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Well, I hope everybody's keeping well. Oh, Czech is um, Czech Republic beating Scotland earlier. <laughs> uh, the only reason I'm cheering on that, normally I'll cheer for England, Scotland, Ireland and Wales, but I have Czech Republic in my work sweepstakey type draw that I've done for you guys. So, there we go. I'm just going to... Give that a bit of a bit of a stiff one. Actually, how stiff's that? Mm, a bit stiffer, I suppose. Because I'm not happy. See, I'm just not happy. You can see that in there, and that is. Let me put your light on a minute. Eh, knuckles. <laughs> oh yes. If you can see in there. See, it's pretty. I know it's underneath the carburetor and you'll never ever see it. I know it's there, don't I? Anyway, right. Bit more of a scrubber dubber. Well, that's certainly an improvement on what it was. I might even brass wheel that over on the drill there. Let me put that to one side. What about the main body? No, that's not really done anything to it. I'm going to show you what I mean with my old rags. Hi, ho, fiddly dee. Oh, you don't want to do it like that. Oh. 
You see what I mean? It's proper. See all this snotty. I don't want to. And again, there. Look, I'm sure. Well, it didn't look like that after I cleaned it the first time. I don't really want to ultrasonic it. I just, I don't know. I've had a few bad experiences with carbs in the ultrasonic bath, so I really, I don't want to go down that route. It's, it's just nasty. I don't like that look, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna change it. I think I've got a new gasket, but uh, I'll check that before I go too far with it. Yeah, that needs a good scrub a dub, don't it? Well, I'm glad I've put that in there now to have a bit of a soak because it's certainly highlighted uh, the bad areas. Right, um, that can stay out. What's left in there? Oh, it's the screws. One, two, three, four. Do 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 that can stay there, that can stay there, that can stay there. Okay, right, um, let me just get rid of these gloves because I don't want to touch the camera uh, with that on there. Right, so uh, where was I? Right, I don't want to do the old zinc plating until... These are spotless. There is no point. It has to be like that. I think I said in an earlier clip, didn't I? Uh, that's not so bad. That's pretty much... I'm going to give that a, uh, a once-over with some proper... I might even use that turps, you know. But like here, I've kind of wire-wheeled that on the drill there just to get the, the, the crusty, rusty stuff off. But it's not clean-clean. So what I'm going to do, again, is for, I've got lots more than that. There's literally great big trays for the fixings. I'm going to do uh, electrolysis on these nuts and bolts, then give them a good clean, then put them in the zinc um, uh, electrolyte to uh, coat them. So that that's ongoing. Um, I'm, I'm not going to use my wheelie bin like I did with the old CD175 tank. So, uh, yeah, um, cracking on. Uh, yeah, I need to put them wheels back together now and literally get them out indoors out of the way because there's lots of stuff now that's finished, that's large, and it's in the way. Uh, then it's rebuild the engine whilst... Um, no, I'm not going to do the zinc plate and, and an electrolysis until I've got a dedicated day to do that. That's fine. Electrolysis used in my 12 volt old car charger uh, literally takes stuff like that. It will take about 10 15 minutes if that because of the voltage going through it. So that will be quite a quick process. Um, so yeah, I can, I can kind of do that in a day. Doesn't once you've got the uh, zinc plating fluid made. Um, by putting the voltage through two pieces of zinc, uh, positive and, and negative, uh, that then should change the water to like a greeny colour. And once you've got that green colour there, you can use that forever and ever, and it will just get better and better. You will leave, I, I'm going to put one zinc anode in there and take the other one out when I've got the water, the, the fluid green, it's not water is it, but it, it's kind of water, um, and then it never runs out, hypothetically, it just gets a stronger mixture. So the first results, A, if, I'm, if they're not perfectly clean they won't be brilliant, uh, B, it's my first attempt at that, and C, it will only get better in the long run as that green liquid gets more greener. -er. Mm. Okay, so there's all that to look forward to. Uh, and then it's literally onto the frame. The forks, the tank, and the rear tank mounting uh, bracket. Uh, Paul is... We got, uh, 
when he took this panel, this uh, engine case away and did that wonderful welding on there, he's, he also took the uh, exhaust pipe, which I picked up for 10 quid second hand, uh, and I can see why. And so does Paul, what he said, it's rubbish. It's made it blooming, it, it, it's so thin, it's literally tin foil around the, the flange end. Um, so uh, he said, no, he said, just, just bite the bullet and get another one. And then we sort of battened a few things around and I suggested perhaps, you know, I can get some, you know, 25 mil conduit, get it in the former and bend it at certain angles to, to try and make a pipe. And with that, Paul went, ah, I've got an idea, leave it with me. I've got a friend of mine that does uh, forming and things. So we're having another bite at it. Cheers, Paul. So hopefully um, uh, we should be able to make something out of that. I know you can't polish a turd and all the rest of it, but we should be able to get there uh, and, and save some pennies by saving that exhaust pipe because there's nothing really wrong with a can. And I've got the cover plate there ready to go on. Handlebars are ready. So anyway, oh Brian, I hope you're having fun on your new 250 V Strom, sir. Is it cool? Is it smooth? Did you ever run out on Sunday? Did you give it a good sprint up and down the motorway? Let, let us know how you got on with it, because I know you, you, your first impressions were pretty darn good. Um, also, Paul, top guy's got a uh, Royal Enfield Himalayan, uh, as do I. My paint is coming off of the engine already. Yes, I ride it all year round, obviously not when it's icy and snowy, but the rest of the time I ride it around. Uh, I, I cut, I've got a jet wash washer, uh, I clean it at least once a fortnight, although in the winter you, you need to keep the grease properly slathered on there, but this paint is still cracking off. Do you remember the Royal Enfield video where that rear bracket, the rear caliper bracket, uh, literally the paint just fell off and I, I had to take that off. I serviced my rear caliper with a, a set of, with a piston and a set of seals I found online and then I, I repainted this aluminium bracket. What I didn't do is or I didn't flip in acid etch it did I because I didn't really know about that at that time so I need to take that bracket off again and fix that uh, Paul mentioned to me that there was a recall on that on the Royal Enfields because or well, not recall as such there was a um, uh, all the rear calipers of the season the front ones were playing around and getting sticky uh, and what happened there for, for a short period of time um, Royal Enfield dealers were, were having your bike back. They were kind of cleaning the seals and the pots and, and the you know the pistons and the chamber and all the rest of it. They were doing all that, but you still had to pay uh, their time. So that, that wasn't good enough. So I think there was going to be a factory recall. Uh, I heard through the grapevine. Um, so yeah, that's pretty good. If that comes off, they'll do the, the front and the rear caliper. Not that I've got any problem with my front and rear caliper at the moment, because I've done it myself, haven't I? But uh, that bracket certainly needs fixing. And with this paint coming off the engine casing, I just can't wait to strip the thing down now and just go right through it with a fine tooth comb and examine every part. Note what, if there's anything up with any part or whatever, whether the swinging arms corroding inside, all that kind of stuff. The little stuff that you can't see. If you ride your bike all year round and you've got salty roads where you live, um, it's going to get in there. So, luckily, I put a sock on, not a literal sock, but a, a, like a rock star sock on the um, coil spring and you know, the shocker assembly. And that, that's kept a lot of crud off of, off of that. So, that's, that's something to be thankful for. But there is just a lot of corrosion underneath, and I can't wait to tear into it, like I say, get to the bottom of it, have it all laid, laid out in a million pieces on the deck in there, just photograph everything. Uh, just it, it might help you guys to, to look after the underside and the stuff you can't see on your bikes, so we can keep these things uh, pristine and looking like new and running uh, as, as they should. Right, I've babbled enough. I need a brew. So I've had a long day today. I don't think I'm going to put any paint on now. It's just basically to uh, finish off episode 21. Um, right. Well, sorry if I bored you. Um, footy's on in a minute, so I'm going to go and watch that. I'm not a real lover of footy, but when you get these big competitions, oh, I love it. Okay, so 
<clears throat> well done all you guys that have, have uh, had teams that are won for you so far. Yeah, nice one. Uh, yeah, England are looking good, aren't they? I like that sound. That looks pretty cool. As is Czech Republic. Um, yeah, proper smart. Right, anyway, take it easy. Like so, that, that, That'll do for now. Uh, and you'll see me again in episode 22. Okay, right. I'm going to take you off of there. And we'll catch you later.